now with Ross Beatty. He's the chairman and CEO of Magma Energy Corp., one of the faster growing geothermal companies in the industry today. Ross, good to see you. Thanks for talking to us. Pleasure. I want to talk about uh, your history in the mining industry and how you're applying that to geothermal. Um, the company has uh, undertaken a variety of acquisitions and is developing projects all over the world. How are you applying your experience in mining to what is happening in geothermal? How do the two overlap? Right. So I've had a long career in mining. I've built eight mining companies. I've sold seven, and I've uh, the one that's left is the world's largest or second largest silver mining company. It's a three billion dollar company called Pan American Silver. It's active in Latin America. It operates eight mines. It's it's in great shape. And and when I decided to retire from that in 2007, and uh, I sold some other companies I'd, I'd had in the minerals in the, in the mining space. I wanted to have a new challenge, so I started Magma Energy uh, thinking that it would be quite a similar type of business to mining. It has an exploration phase, uh, an advanced exploration, feasibility, construction, permitting, financing, operation. It takes four or five years to get these projects going and works in the same rocks, in the same countries as, as the gold and silver industry. It ha requires a lot of capital up front. The big difference is you sell electricity instead of metals. So you're dealing with domestic sales instead of an international market. But it's, it's fundamentally, when I looked at the business, I thought it had a lot of potential to generate great cash flow. And the other thing is, I thought I could build a world-class company quickly, the same way I did in the silver business, taking Pan American from a standing start into the world's second largest silver mining company. And so in the last couple of years, have you found that that is the case? Absolutely. We're, we're doing that. There's, there's, a, there's a handful of companies in the space. There's four or five public companies, which is a tiny, tiny amount. Uh, there's, there's a, because of the financial markets right now, they're, they're fairly challenged and a person like me who's had a lot of experience raising capital uh, and has a very good uh, pedigree with investors, uh, we have a good uh, critical uh, or we have a good uh, opportunity base there to, to outcompete other people at this moment in time. And so I really felt there was an opportunity to build a world-class company and we've so far been doing that. In only two years, Magma Energy now is the second largest primary geothermal company in North America, by far the fastest growing company in the geothermal space in the world. And I expect we're going to keep doing that for the, for the foreseeable future. So has the lack of project finance in the U.S. and internationally impacted your ability to move forward on some of these early stage projects and ones in later phases? So what we've done in the last two years is from a standing start, we've built a very large land position in the U.S. We just simply bought leases. Those are great because we don't have to develop them anytime soon. So we've, we've acquired a big land position. We're doing early stage exploration. Plus, we bought an operation that's producing right now called Soda Lake. So we produce about 11 megawatts in the U.S., and we have a nice operating team around that asset. So we have exploration in the U.S., one producer in the U.S. In Chile, we've done a lot of surface exploration, and we've then moved to a discovery of a very large resource, which we're currently drilling, and that's, uh, that's a long-term growth asset for us in, in South America. Bolted on with the exploration development, we went to Iceland and we bought a very large company that produces 175 megawatts of geothermal power. That's and in HS, that, Orca. HS Orca. And in doing that, we've, 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 we've developed a very balanced portfolio of exploration assets in places like Chile and the U.S., along with producing assets in Iceland and the U.S., and then a lot of pipeline assets that we're moving forward to, to ultimately produce more electricity, better cash flow, a bigger income statement, uh, through the next four or five years of organic growth in Iceland, in the U.S., and in South America. And that, to me, is a, is a, is a great portfolio approach. We're going big. We're well-financed. We're not letting the, the financial problems in the U.S. affect us because we're going international. And uh, I think it's a real winning formula. That HS Orca acquisition was an interesting one, got a lot of press because of uh, a lot of the concerns from uh, people in Iceland about selling a national company to a private developer. Right. Um, did anything that you learned from that experience and the, and the, the backlash that you got from people yeah, in Iceland? Yeah, it was, it was tedious. And, and it, was, it was a problem that, in a way, it was, the opportunity came to us because Iceland's distressed right now. Uh, they needed to, to, to they need, some of the shareholders of that company needed to improve their balance sheets and become, uh, and, and, and get that which we could produce, which, is, which was cash to them. And we, we did that acquiring the interest, but at the same time, because of the, of the stress in Iceland, a lot of people were very fearful of, of business, they were very fearful of foreign developers, they, they had all kinds of crazy notions about who we were and what we were about that we had to dispel and we continue to have to dispel. Uh, they thought we were hooked into the IMF, they thought we were backed by the same kind of uh, financial Vikings in Iceland that brought the country down. 
I mean, all of that was nonsense. And uh, they were afraid that we were just going to come in, make a quick flip, and, and, and get out quickly. A lot of stuff that just isn't true. So a lot of the fear was just understandable concern about a company they'd never heard of before. We had to use a Swedish subsidiary to get into Iceland, which was really unfortunate. That's what our, that's what the only way we could do it legally. Because and we in did Iceland, that. they don't allow you to acquire Canadians companies. Canadians couldn't come, couldn't acquire a, a, unless you're in the directly. European economic that's right. zone. So we had to do that. I mean, it was perfectly legal. We've been we've been blessed on many many occasions, on three occasions, by the Iceland's government. But it's it's it was a lousy way to get in there. We had no choice. So a lot of it was just. Just unfortunate, and and it's, to some degree, I made some mistakes. I engaged uh, Bjork, who was a famous Icelandic music star, and I shouldn't have done that. It was just a stupid thing to do. So, so uh, what we're trying to do now, now that we've actually completed the deal, we own 98.5 percent of that company, is we're trying to maintain a, a very good position in Iceland as a as a good company with great uh, corporate relations with the people, uh, protecting the environment using Icelanders to build our business outside Iceland to give them more opportunities for jobs, strengthening their, their financial picture, really being a great contributor to the Icelandic economy, and of course that region in Iceland where the plant is located. And so we're letting our words speak more than our, we're letting our actions speak louder than our words. So what we're hearing at this conference is that um, there's a real lack of equipment moving forward. We're going to need a lot more drilling rigs which will compete with the oil and gas industries for. There's a lack of work, uh, of a sophisticated workforce, right. especially in developing countries, uh, partly where you're developing projects. Um, and there are questions about the stimulus package here in the U.S. So are yeah. those going to challenge the industry in the next couple of years? Do you think that the industry is going to be able to meet its goals and you as a company will meet your goals given those very serious challenges? Sure. So uh, what happens outside our company is not terribly important to me. All we're looking at is how are we going to be able to grow and how are we going to be able to prosper. And I would say with the fantastic team of people we have in the U.S. who are, who are super experienced in binary turbine and binary uh, plant development, with a great exploration team that's very deep in experience here, we're doing fine in the U.S. We're not relying on incentives to make our business case. We're making our business case just as a good business to get into long term. And we think the geothermal business is a great business to get into long term. We don't need incentives. We're very happy to have them, but they're not essential. In Iceland, You're saying incentives are not essential to the geothermal? They should, I don't want to build a business that needs incentives. How is that the case, though? I mean, the companies are we, scrambling to start construction before the stimulus package. In the U.S. Di right. Magma is an international company now. Yes. So we're in Chile, which doesn't have incentives. We're in Peru, that doesn't have incentives. We're in Iceland, that doesn't have incentives. And we're in, we're in the U.S., and we don't want to count on the incentives because they're here today. They might be gone tomorrow. So I just think it's a bad business plan to build a business around having to have incentives. That's, what, that's all I'm saying. In terms of people, we've got a fabulous team, 100 people in Iceland who are going to be able to be used on, on these high temperature systems that we're exploring in Chile, for example. Uh, Iceland's a wonderful, wonderful uh, location for, for skilled workforce in geothermal. As far as drills go, I, I'm, I'm going to say there's going to be enough drills. Uh, everybody talks about a shortage, but I think, there's, I think the drilling side should be fine. I think you will find that there's a lot more hype than there is reality in terms of drill, uh, programs being financed. A place like this especially, you, you know, there's a lot more talk than there actually is action on the, on the ground. And, you mean uh, investors are talking more than that? I mean, or? companies are talking about what they're going to do in two and three and four years, and, and actually you rarely find that they actually do them because they have problems financing. So if you don't have finance, you don't have a need for people, you don't have a need for drills. Uh, we're doing okay. We have enough capital to, 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 to advance our business. We've, we've been very strong financially, and I see that continuing. Uh, so I don't feel that stress. I mean, the stress is always, to me, getting the right projects. That's the, that's the hardest thing in this business, getting the right project. If you have a great project, believe me, you'll find the drills, you'll find the people, and you'll find the money. The big problem with this industry is that you need so much capital up front for exploration. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. That's a serious problem in this industry, and I think that comes right back to what I just said. Because of that, it's finance that drives real activity, not, not words. So are you bullish on geothermal? Geothermal is a tough business for sure. I mean, I'm a, I've got uh, I've got scars already after only have been, been in the business a couple of years. We've had a, a challenge at Soda Lake get into capacity. We had an ambition to double our capacity very quickly. We're still working on that a year and a half later. So it's been it's been tough in Chile. We've got this fabulous resource, but drilling has been more expensive and slower than we planned on. And uh, and all of these things are, are are for sure issues with with the geothermal business. But I'm still convinced that it's a great business long term. It's clean energy. It's good for the world. 
it's a, it's an opportunity for a, for a leading company to come up from from nothing like like we're um, uh, striving to become. And at the end of the day, I think we've uh, executed very, very well in our business plan, and we're likely to continue to do that. Well, Ross Beattie, Chairman and CEO of Magma Energy Corp., thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you.